Hey guys, Tim O'Neill here again for another installment of our beginner fly tying uh, lessons. It is uh, about the middle of February and we're getting close to our shad season here in northern Delaware. And the shad run, particularly the hickory shad, can be a ton of fun to catch um, on fly gear. So the next couple installments we're going to do a couple of my favorite shad patterns. Tonight we're going to do one that's called O'Neill Shad Crack and this is our number one uh, pattern and we fish this probably 90 percent of the time. So the hook that we're going to be tying with it's a Mustad R75 79580. It's a 2x heavy 5xl streamer hook and on the end of the hook we've got a 3 16 red tungsten bead. So I'm going to go ahead and get this hook positioned in my Norvice here. Shad flies are typically very, very easy to tie. There's not a lot to them. Pretty quick, not a lot of materials. And um, you can usually usually fill your boxes up pretty good, pretty quickly. So I've got my scissors here. I've got my hook in my vise. I'm going to tie on. I'm using uh, Semperfly's Classic Waxed 6 Ot in Chartreuse. This pattern is going to be chartreuse and red. We tie it in four major colors. Chartreuse with a red bead, white with a pink bead, black with a chartreuse bead, and my other favorite is bubblegum pink with an electric blue bead. So we're going to lay a little bit of thread base down and get back to the bend of the hook there just to a point right above the barb. Now I've got a marabou blood quill that I've stripped and prepped. This is going to be our tail. Shad are notorious for being short strikers, so I don't want a lot of, I don't want a really long tail on this. So my tail is going to be the length from the front of the eye of the hook to the point. Typically when you're tying this pattern, you'll go the length of the shank of the hook or maybe a little bit longer if you were tying like a bugger. For this shad pattern, I'm going to shorten that up, so we're going to go from the front of the eye to the point of the hook. So I got my fibers folded back here and I'm going to measure this up with my fingers which is about right there. I'm going to switch hands and I'm going to lay this on the near side of the hook at a 45 degree angle. I'm going to take a loose wrap. I'm going to take a medium wrap and then I'm going to take a couple of good hard wraps and pull down and that's going to seat my tail. Okay. Now a lot of times you will see people cut this off. I don't want to do that just yet. I want to leave that on and use it to bulk up the underside of the uh, pattern. So I'm just going to take some some spaced spiral wraps. This is just to get this lashed down to the shank of the hook all the way up to the bead. Okay, Now I'm going to cut this off. So I'm going to come in here with my scissors. Take that off. Now I've got my tail on and I've got the feather lashed down to the shank of the hook. It's on there but it's not tight and if I were to put my body on top of this eventually that feather is going to start to roll around the shank of the hook and then the whole fly is going to come apart so I need to tighten that down. So I'm going to take some wraps here and I'm going to get this going and then I'm going to take the vise and I'm going to spin it and you can see how it just tightens that feather right down for me. It gives me a nice smooth underbody. I've got one little fiber here that wants to be a little ornery. I'm going to catch him. Okay, and then we're going to work our way back up right up to the bead. Okay, now now see how we've we've about doubled the diameter of the shank of the hook, but it's on there and it's good and tight and we've got a good foundation to lay our body down, which is going to be just regular medium chartreuse chenille. Okay, now chenille is typically two materials. It is a core. It's it's kind of a, like a micro dubbing brush, if you will. It has a core that's twisted up and then the, the actual fuzzy, in this case chartreuse material, is spun in the core. And if you go to tie this down onto your hook, it can get a little bulky. So what we generally do, I'm going to pinch this with my left hand, and then I'm just going to pull the fuzzy off, and then that exposes the white core that you can see in there. Okay, I'm going to take that, and I'm going to tie in right at the junction of the chenille and where I've exposed the core. I'm going to take three good tight wraps. Now I'm going to come in and I'm going to grab that core and I'm going to pull it back and I'm going to fold it on top of itself and I'm going to wrap right back over top of the core and the chenille all the way back to my tying point back at the tail. 
I'm going to work my way up. And I'm going to hang, put a half hitch in, and I'm going to hang this onto my bobbin cradle. Okay, now, this next step, this is where I see a lot of people making a mistake, whether you're hand wrapping or whether you're using a rotary vise or the nor vise where you can spin the hook. You have to manipulate your way around the point of this hook. There, there's no way to get around it. You can see if I keep turning, the point of the hook is going to catch the material. And what I see a lot of people do, they come around here and then they move the material around the point of the hook and then they will continue to wrap the material up the shank of the hook. And see what that does? It gives you that little ugly spot right there where you don't cover up your tie-in point completely. Now what you want to do when you get to this point, okay, you want to manipulate around the point of the hook. Then you want to bring your material back so that it's perpendicular to the shank. And you're going to wrap right over top of your tying point. And then you can see you've got no ugly spot. And just walk that up nice touching wraps. You don't want to overlap. You just want your, 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 your new wrap laying next to your previous wrap. Bring it all the way up. Give it a little tug here to seat it. And bring your bobbin back and we're going to go three behind and these these wraps are right behind the bead. We'll go three behind, three in front and I'm going to do a quick whip finish and I'll do two three turn whip finishes and I'll come in here and I'll cut my thread off Okay, now I'm going to pull up with the material. You can see I'm flexing that hook a little bit. And then I'm going to come in with my scissors and I'm going to push down. So I'm pushing down against the hook and the bead with my scissors. And I'm pulling up with the material. And I'm going to have one quick cut. And it's going to cut it off nice and flush. A little bit of fuzz there we can get out. We've got a nice clean tie off point. And that's it. That's our number one shad fly. We call that O'Neill's Shad Crack. There you go, guys. Thank you for joining us again.